Shall we? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, Greg Lachlan, the, I'm the representative from Fra Frameworks Program. Um, sitting next to me is John Weaver, who is the manager of the Office of Spatial Policy, which is inside Resources, Energy and Tourism. On the other side of the divide is an IT consultant, uh, Lucas Foxton, and of course, Alex Hayes. So the outline for today is I'm going to speak for just a couple of minutes, I'm giving you the prehistory, I think it'd be fair to say, of the Gazetteer. I'll hand over to John, who will take you through a demonstration and some, I guess, some chat about where it's going to go from here. And then I'll um, wrap it up with a few comments about how we might uh, use our own staff in ANS for outreach of this product now that it's uh, available free. So about 10 years ago, um, I ran into the Gazetteer for the first time. I'd just been appointed Director of Geography for the Australian Bureau of Statistics. And in those days, the Gazetteer of Australia was um, just a typed list of place names and who gave them those names. You could buy it on a floppy disk, I think, or a couple of floppy disks, I guess it would have been in those days. Uh, but that's all it was, just simply a list, a computerised list, and that list is created by the state mapping authorities. Um, about four or five years ago, um, the Gazetteer of Australia was made into an electronic product, but was really only a sort of a command line thing. You'd enter Sydney and it would enter a name like Sydney, for example, and it would return any matches it had, but it had no mapping capability, no, no geography at all. So it was still basically a flat file approach and a fees applied. So uh, what we're going to show you now, if you like, is actually the second redevelopment of the Gazetteer. The first one we completed last year, and this second one includes a machine-to-machine -machine interface. And of course, it has a mapping background. So with that said, I'll now hand over to John Weaver, Manager, Office of Spatial Policy. Thank you, Greg. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, just to to cover a little bit more of the background of the Gazetteer. It's a project, as Greg said, that's been funded by ANS. It was project managed originally by the Office of Spatial Data Management, uh, which has now become the Office of Spatial Policy in red. The data that sit in the Gazetteer, all of the place names, are sourced from the jurisdictions. They are input by the jurisdictional place names offices and coordinated through the CGNA, which is the Committee for Geographic Names of Australasia. Uh, so all of the jurisdictions in Australia and New Zealand uh, are involved in that, but for the purpose of the Gazetteer, we only have the Australian place names. The data is aggregated by GA and then provided through, uh, still through the system that Greg was talking about, where you can log on to a web page in GA, type in a place name and get back some information. And now through this web in a map enabled um, web service. Currently it's being hosted by the Department of Regional Australia and a whole lot of other letters that I don't know what they mean. Uh, and it's being housed in the Uber secure cloud. The main advantage of this is that this reconstruction of the Gazetteer means that the data are all available free. Previously, CGNA charged for the data, but through this process, we've been able to encourage them to make it available free of charge. The uh, remit of OSP is to, in part at least, to build 11 data themes with continental coverage which give context to business information, to research information, and to uh, enable practitioners to do what they're best at and simply view their data in the context of these 11 themes. And the National Gazetteer is one of those themes. So this is, with Anne's assistance and dollars, we've gone a long way to providing the, thir the first of these themes into the national context. GA have put up their hand to take on the management of the Gazetteer uh, and 
the future steps that we see in that management process will be the integration of the Australian Antarctic Gazetteer and the Marine uh, Maritime Gazetteer, which will give us a much richer source of information and somewhat broader reach. The this gazetteer has for has a uh, a test version of online updates. So the jurisdiction should be able to come on and do automatic online updates directly into the gazetteer rather than having to go through a, an intermediate step of processing with in GA. That'll give us better currency and richer content over time. So that's where we're up to with uh, the process. And this is the gazetteer. Now, simple enough to do a search. Um, I'm going to put in Jervis Bay because that's pretty much where I spent most of my growing up years. Uh, you type in the name, it does the search and come uh, zooms to the area of interest, in this case, Jervis Bay. Uh, you can query each of the tags and get a little bit more information both on the screen uh, balloon, but also in this uh, details box to the right hand side, left hand side, sorry, the other right. You can refine your search by defining an area of interest. And instead of looking in Jervis Bay, let's have a look for a type of, we'll go for beaches because we know that there are beaches in that area. and do the search. And once again, then all of the features that come up are in fact beach type. So you can search by clicking over here, you get to see which tag is which on the screen. Scrolling down allows you to search for uh, more extensive uh, entries in the list. You can select multiple entries, uh, so let's just tag a few. And you can then export your selection in either a CSV file or an XML format. Mm. So let's select CSV and go OK. And what you get back is all of the entries that you've selected. You can, in fact, dump the entire database to a, a CSV file or an XML file. It's probably not a recommended outcome, uh, approach, but certainly you can then export the selection to um, a file that you can then import into other applications if you are uh, so inclined. Now, that's a really quick and dirty look at how this works. We've got Greg here, so let's turn these off and search for Greg and see what we get. This search may take a little while. I don't know how prevalent Greg is in the database. Oh, look at that. Down in the Antarctic Territories. Oh, There. My apologies, I've done something that I shouldn't have there and got a result I didn't expect. You just have type beach still selected, John. Oh, uh, did I? Okay. Greg Chapel Ball. <laughs> On Greg. Up in the Northern Territory. So Greg gets around a bit, obviously. And is a bore. <laughs> you said that. So this is the human interface, the way that you would personally interact with the system. It does, um, it, I should say too, at the moment, it's running over open street maps. Part of uh, the deal that I have with PSMA at the moment is that they will provide a series of authoritative uh, web map tiles, which will ultimately replace open street maps and give you jurisdictional information down to street address level uh, with not less than three months currency and from authoritative sources so that you get that 
uh, rich and uh, verifiable information as the backdrop. That said, John, why don't you um, zoom in or just do a polygon tool over, say, somewhere around near Perth, just to show everyone the, Perth? Oh, yeah, just anywhere in the beautiful part of the world, to show them the, the, the level of detail, that con the topo detail on that. Mm -hmm. Let's zoom in a bit on the Earth first. So it, it is quite a rich, uh, OpenStreetMaps is quite a rich database sitting behind all of this um, with a lot of detail in it. As you can see, so even just as a search engine for having a look at uh, the background to a particular area, this is an extremely useful tool. Convention Center. Um, now. It also has machine to machine function. Uh, we have nine of the 10 machine to machine applications running at the moment. Uh, one of them, uh, we're missing a file in the upload that we got from um, um, geometry. Uh, and we've requested that. So that one will be working by the end of the week as well. As I said before, we lost a week uh, for unavoidable reasons. So while we fully expected this to be the full live version today, we have to say that it won't be the full live version probably till midnight on Friday, uh, but we will have it all running by then and everything will be uh, operational. The website is gazetteer, G-A-Z-E-T-T-E-R. -E -E I've seen some very funny spellings of gazetteer, .mymaps.gov.au. That'll get you to the site, uh, and then you can lay it to your heart's content. Now understand that between now and midnight Friday, uh, we will be making changes, tweaks around the edges, uh, bringing it up and down periodically. So if you go to the site and it's not running, that means we're probably fixing something or tweaking something in the GUI or uh, generally getting it into full production mode. So bear with us until Friday evening uh, or Saturday morning. But uh, after that, it should be fully operational in the Uber um, workspace and uh, capable of supporting whatever searches you need it to do. Good. You're making notes there. Um, Lucas, would you like to come around and demonstrate how the machine to machine functionality works? How's my audio on the other side there? Should I come around? No, it should be, no, it's fine. Should be fine? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, this so I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping people can hear me. Uh, basically, uh, what we've set up, or what some geometry and, uh, and OSP have set up together, are a range of accessible web services that basically can, in accordance with what's called a service-oriented architecture, uh, a web service can request information from our web service that connects to the Australian Gazetteer and return a response to that particular requesting service and then utilise the data within that response um, from the perspective of the requesting service. And obviously we don't have um, requesting services set up just yet because um, other people, other parties will set up those requesting services in time. But just to give you a demonstration of um, how the requests are made, basically within an, uh, an XML file, a web address essentially, a uniform resource locator is embedded and makes the request. And I popped one in the top here. And if we just click on um, uh, return, that's the kind of response that you'll get with all the information in an XML file that can then be passed and utilized by the requesting web service. And um, it, it doesn't look like much when you're just looking at the XML. But that information um, can then be passed by a web browser and presented in whatever way you'd like to present it within your particular requesting web service. 
the general notion is what's referred to as um, SOA or service oriented architecture, specifically um, uh, web services running under SOA. Um, uh, there, there's an example of, of basically what's happened. You, you, you pass a request, you receive a response back containing the information you've requested. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah. Now, I guess the CSIRA guys are more than capable of building web services, web requests, and getting that activated, but it's a bit hard to demonstrate it uh, in this sort of an environment without services already up and running. So, oh, that's, that's totally understandable. Um, now, I think that's all I want to say, and we will come back to yeah, sure, we will come back to questions in a moment. But would you like to just close off? Yes, um, they certainly are ahead of the time here. So it's uh, Greg Lockton again, and just a couple of um, uh, just a couple of points. Um, we're currently um, uh, working um, with the Research Data Australia team to look at ways or options for functionally integrating the Gazetteer into Research Data Australia, which I'll probably call RDA um, from here on in. Um, at this stage, we're really only at the discussion part. I mean, one, if you if you wanted to go for functional integration light, you would just have the Gazetteer available in another window. But the sort of thing that we, we're talking about at this stage, uh, no firm plans, uh, that you might be sitting there in Research Data Australia looking at some of the rich metadata, and humans are very good at recognising place names and reading the context of things, and you just take that word, that word might be Lachlan or Greg or something, or orange, and pass that to the Gazetteer, and it'll of course tell you how many places exist and show you where they exist. That, that, that's, that would be a light level of integration, but there are other levels of integration possible, and we're just at the discussion stage. The, um, the other two things I want to mention briefly is that with, uh, with Anne's set up the way it is, I think we're in a good position with our client liaison officers and all of the other project officers um, to um, Take, uh, undertake some outreach for the Gazetteer into the research and innovation sector. We're very well connected into that sector and um, once this is um, released, say Friday afternoon or next Monday, I think we'll be having discussions with, with directors and, and other staff and seeing what we can do to basically get the name and, um, and the URL of the Gazetteer out there because after all, when Anne's got involved in this, um, our executive director, Ross Wilkinson, was very, very clear that although he appreciated the technology, what he wanted to do was add a rich dimension to the research and innovation sector. And that really is about researchers and institutions. So there's still more work to be done. The final point I'd like to make before we go to questions and comments is that um, we'll be um, doing a presentation, a more detailed presentation, um, at the next Spatial at Gov conference, which is uh, third week of November. Third week of November. So um, hopefully um, we'll see some of you there and and I'll take it from there. So that's all I have to say. Okay.